What happened at the worst party you've ever been to? I went to a friend's graduation party after high school. I wasn't great friends with him, but I figured I would stop by with my GF because he was nice enough to invite me. The party was so done up. Tables full of food, streamers, confetti, all that crap. And my GF and I were the only ones there. I felt awful. His parents clearly went all out to celebrate it, and it was so uncomfortable being one of five people there, including him and his parents. I felt awful for him. We stayed for hours out of pity, and just kind of made small talk. Super depressing colon. This is why I never throw parties for myself. But good on you for actually showing up. You kept that from being the worst day ever, even if it was super awkward. The floor collapsed under the weight of a throng of jumping freshmen. I'm sorry you had to party with freshmen. High school, late 80s, at an outside party with a bonfire to celebrate the end of the school year. Some numb nuts throws a glass bottle of beer into the fire. About 20 minutes later the bottle explodes and shoots a stream of boiling beer all over a girl's crotch and legs. Ambulance was called. I believe she required several skin grafts over several months. I can still remember her shrilling scream and then her passing out. Good lord, that sounds frightening. My brother was at a party once where there were more than a couple underage drinkers present. The house they were at had a thin driveway so all the cars were packed into a bottleneck. The night wore on and around 1 in the morning someone decided they wanted to go home. They found the girl who owned the car at the front of the bottleneck and asked her to move her car so she could get out. She said she couldn't because she had a breathalyzer installed in her car and it wouldn't start until someone sober blew into it. They went around the party and tried to find anyone who hasn't been drinking and couldn't find one. Another guy had the brilliant idea of asking the cool 20 something dude next door to do it. So an envoy of teens head over to the house next door and ask the dude living there if he would please blow into a breathalyzer so they could leave. The dude takes a minute to look the group over takes a drag of his cigarette, and says, you're gonna give me $25 for every person at the party or I'm calling the cops. That last bit played out like a movie in my head. So awesome. My sister's birthday was in the middle of the school holidays, and for her 7th birthday she had a party that no one turned up to. Turns out our mother put the wrong date on the invites, so a lot of people had tried to come over the day before whilst we were out. That's better than the alternative where the date was correct and flat out no one showed up. Some girl apparently had made out with a guy who wasn't her boyfriend before leaving. Someone at the party tells him via text and a little while later someone is kicking down the door. He barges in waving a gun around screaming, which one of you am made out with my girl people are ducking, scurrying away and I'm just standing there thinking, if this is how I die I'm going to be pee. Host who knew him quickly pushes him out the door. My buddy's girlfriend jerked off his dog while he was out back talking. She did it to prove she could get anyone or anything off. It was horrifying. I bet every guy around her was really disappointed when I can get anyone off turned into watch while I get this dog off. My best friend and two others were shot and killed at the party. Some friends and I decided to throw a going away party for myself, as I was moving out of the country. The party was pretty big, we had a keg and quite a few bottles. I knew everyone there, and it was going great. I received a call from a friend, who requested that I grab him a couple cups from the keg before it got emptied. No problem. Got the cups full and headed to the kitchen. While I was in the kitchen, an argument broke loose in the living room, which I could see from the kitchen. It was my best friend and a random guy who I had seen around a few times before. The random guy was obviously messed up, and had started asking my friend where his brother was. Of course, his brother was at the party, but in the backyard. My friend said something along the lines of you've gotta get through me to get to him and that's when I saw my friend's eyes light up as the random guy pulled a gun from his pants. Instinctively, I hit the floor and hid in a corner of the kitchen. There was no delay, he just started shooting. He unloaded the whole clip consecutively. Apparently, after shooting my friend in the head twice and spraying many of my other friends in the living room with his blood, he turned around and began shooting into the crowd of people who had been watching. He shot and killed another friend of mine, and shot another friend three times in the stomach. He survived, but just barely. I stayed in my corner, cowering and frozen. I knew I had to GTFO and don't look at anything. 
People were screaming you killed him and the 100 people that were in the house were now trying to leave through every door. I finally came out of the kitchen and fled through the living room, keeping my eyes fixated on the door. Looking back on it, I actually jumped over one of the guys who had been shot. It didn't register in my mind why he was just laying on the floor. According to the news, the shooter fled to his house. The cops found him there a couple hours later, and camped out in front of his place. He came outside, holding his gun, and was shot and killed by the police. It later came out that the argument was over a girl, and how my best friend's brother was now with her. Apparently he didn't like that, and had decided to kill him. I don't really go to big parties anymore. R.I.P. Ben. Man reading through the comments I was like all these sound like some flavor of a party everyone's been to. This was the first I read that was like dang that reality is bad. I would have PTSD after that. Hope you're alright now. Since many of these stories are about drunk crapping and puking and other horrible things, allow me to lighten the mood with some comedy. For one unlucky tween party goer, this was definitely the worst party ever. My pal had a birthday sleepover. We were in 8th or 9th grade, I think. Street Fighter 2 had just came out for the SNES so that was basically all we did. His parents had laid out some snacks and drinks on a party table, and there was one of these huge bags of party sized Doritos there. We were playing Street Fighter when one of the guys grabbed a chip, bit into it, and yelled Doug this chip is wet he began investigating the bag and we quickly discovered that all the chips were wet. The birthday boy's 5 year old little brother had taken advantage of our Street Fighter distraction and licked all of the Dorito dust from every chip and placed them back in the bag. We found him playing in his room his face covered in the implicating dust. I think college has desensitized me to drunk people at parties, so most of those stories don't bother me too much, but this would have freaked me the heck out. Went to a bachelor party at a house someone rented with a buddy. We got there late so everyone was pretty lit by the time we got there, especially the bachelor. Now, he hired like 4 strippers for the party to walk around and dance for everybody but at one point the strippers took the bachelor to the middle of the room and they were going to do a dance just for him. Again, by this time the dude is gone but he manages to stumble into the chair in the middle of the room. The strippers set up this kiddie pool in front of him and a couple of them were going to wrestle each other covered in baby oil. While they were oiling each other up in the middle of the room, one of the other girls starts to grind up on the guy and dance for him. Well she made it past like one verse of pour some sugar on me, when homie just threw up everywhere. I mean this was like someone turned on a fire hose of vomit. Of course he just wrenched that poor girl that was dancing for him which made her freak out and run away towards the kiddie pool, which remind you has two oiled up strippers. Covered in vomit, she slips, takes the other girls down with her and she throws up all over them. At this point there's three strippers, flailing around like fish out of water trying desperately to get out of a kiddie pool covered in baby oil and vomit slipping and falling over each other while the bachelor is past the frick out, covered in vomit, drooling on himself in a chair in the middle of the room. And just to add to this, I guess the strippers bring a guy with them for protection or whatever and he is losing his crap. He's trying to get the girls out of the pool, getting all sorts of nasty crap on himself, slipping around while just repeating what the frick over and over. Good times. I'm really glad I scrolled this far. Went to another college to visit some friends. I walk through the door and realize something's wrong. They were all drunk, and watching some fat chick poop on the floor. I left 5 minutes later still laughing hysterically. I visited a buddy of mine at his college and he invited me to his fraternity's party. They forgot to send the social email to the sorority, so none of them showed up. This was supposed to be a huge party. So all the broth showed up hammered and angry at seemingly everyone that there were no girls. It was a toga party. 55 dudes, 0 girls, and 55 togos. Better than fewer than 55 togos. A couple of months ago I went to my friend's party which was joined with his flatmates. About 20 minutes after we got there the housemate started banging on a glass with a fork and one of my friends got everyone to quiet down assuming it was a speech. The guy then says there are too many people here that I don't know and told me and most of my friends to leave. He took us down to let us out but couldn't unlock the front door so we had to awkwardly stand there for 15 minutes until he found the housemate we were friends with and made him let us all out. 
I was invited to a birthday party and I took a six pack of beer. I found out halfway through the party that it was actually an anniversary party for the woman's first year of being sober. Everyone at the party was from the group at Alcoholics Anonymous. I was the only person standing there with a beer in my hand. I quickly left and was too embarrassed to take the remaining beers. For years after, I wondered whether any of those people drank the rest of my beer and feel off the wagon as a result. Backstory. We had a friend that liked to throw parties, but most of the people that showed up were underage, including me. I went to a few of his parties, but he lived in a dorm and the parties got bigger and bigger so my so and I got sketched out and stopped going. Good thing too because the next one got busted, 50 underage people with two guys that were 21, the host and another random friend. The host was charged and kicked out of the dorm and everyone except for the of age friend, had to go to student conduct. Fast forward a couple months and he's throwing another party in his new apartment. I was living in the same complex, and my roommates and I decided we'd go. The host had hyped it up a bit, he had a Facebook page for his parties, and it was supposed to start at 10. Of course, we don't show up on time cause that's uncool and we get there around 11 after pre-gaming a bit. When we get there there's techno music and lights in the window, but when the door opens there's no one there but the host and a keg of shock top. It's just me, three friends I brought, and the lonely host. We tried to pick it up a bit by playing some drinking games, but the host was desperately texting everyone in his phone to try to get people to come and not even paying attention to the four guests he does have. At one point a few more people knocked on the door but left when they saw it was empty. He ended up putting on Space Jam. We left about 30 minutes and because we couldn't take it anymore. I threw a surprise birthday party for my middle sister last year and she got super upset. She cried and made a huge scene in front of everyone at the restaurant. She thought her boyfriend was gonna propose because he wouldn't tell her where they were going. She's the worst. Very ungrateful girl I must say. Well, I'm late to the party, ha ha ha, but here's mine. Senior year of college, me and two classmates rented a big, crappy house in which we held big, crappy parties most weekends. We were all theater majors, so every time a show opened or some other big event occurred in our major, we invited everyone over afterward to get sloppy and stupid. One of our last parties before graduation, my roommate invited her friend from high school down. He seemed like a pretty nice guy when I met him during the day, and at the party he was even nicer, giving out bumps off seat to all of our friends in my roommate's bedroom. Now, I'm not too prudish about drug use. Though I wouldn't do coke myself, I don't necessarily have a problem with other people doing so. But this dude was a bona fide drug dealer, so I drank a little more and avoided my roommate's bedroom. Flash forward a few hours, and suddenly some coked out chick I didn't know is puking in our fridge. Plenty of people have puked at my house, it's what you get when you throw parties, but never in my dang fridge. I had just gone grocery shopping earlier that day, so I was feeling pretty pee. At least this girl was kind enough to move over to the sink for her second wave, as I accompany the girl out of the house and call her a cab. Her friends arrive and are all, where are you taking our friend? She's sick. WHO are you? I respond. I live here, and your friend just vomited on my cauliflower. The friends are also pretty drunk. Not sure if they were coked out, but they may have been. Anyway, they shout a little bit at me, but when they realize that I'm not actually doing anything wrong, they start shouting at their friend for being such a freaking freshman. By this point, the girl is sitting on my lawn and pulling up the grass. I explain that I've called a cab and tell the two others to just wait until it gets there and to please get their friend home. Back inside, the party is starting to wane, and I'm grateful, cause I've got the freaking fridge to clean. But when I arrive in the kitchen, there's the sea dealer, whistling a happy tune and cleaning the puke out of my fridge. He looks at me and says, hey, don't worry, man, I've got this. Next morning, the coke dealer is gone but the fridge is spotless. He even bought me some new cauliflower. TL. DR. C dealer cleaned vomit out of my fridge. This ended up far better than I had imagined. Was invited to a sorority party and thought it was going to be like the movies. Wild. Boy was I wrong. 
Ended up sitting in the corner of a room smoking hash all night and watched one girl eat an entire roast chicken to herself before I sauntered home blazed as frick at midnight. There was no alcohol at the party. It wasn't like the movies. That sounds chill f. Acquaintance I had met a few weeks prior invited me to a surprise party for his girlfriend. He said free beer so I was there. I show up and it's pre-gaming and your usual college shenanigans. Person in charge of keeping her busy texts him and says they'll be home soon. We are all pretty blitzed at this point but we manage to start hiding. Two minutes pass, then two more, and nothing. Finally I get up to go find him. He's getting SBJ from one of the other girls at the party. They barely noticed me, but in the meantime, the girlfriend came to the front door and she couldn't have been more excited. Everything other than that was going great until I was formally introduced to the girl giving some sloppy head. It was the girlfriend's sister. No one at this party knew except me. That was the worst party because it sobered me up quick with awkwardness all night. I bet that relationship lasted. It was a bachelor party. A friend of a friend was getting married. I ended up there because my buddy had an extra invitation. Strippers all around. Booze and crap. About 30 minutes later. Five to six wives break in the place and start to yell at their husbands, almost all of them with a stripper by their side. I left as soon as possible and matubated myself to sleep. Matubated. Oh frick yeah. Bills. Working full time. Oh yeah. Maybe I'll read a book after this oh yeah. Sensible meals and budgeting ooh ugh. Few years ago my friend threw a big party at the house she shared with three guys. Everyone who lived in this house was in a relationship, and all of them had been friends since they were about 11. The morning of the party it emerged that a few days before one of the guys had sexually assaulted another's girlfriend. At the party everyone was trying to keep this down low because only three people knew. I was told that he couldn't come because he was ill and went to stay at home for a day or two. The entire story came out at about 2am. Everyone was screaming, tears everywhere, so many punches were thrown, and the guy who did it wasn't even there. The house was wrecked completely. It ended at like 4am with me and a couple of other people just sitting on the steps eating the cupcakes someone brought staring at the mess. That party, and the events leading up to it, completely destroyed a friend group. The guy that did it maintains that it was mutual. The girl it happened to maintains he tried to rape her. The four people that lived together divided down the middle and haven't spoken to the other two since they moved out three weeks after the party. Whoa, that's pretty freaking bad. I think they should have cancelled the dang party. Fools decided to hold the keg in the basement. The party got way too crowded and people ended up camping around the keg. As you can imagine, the basement got exceedingly hot and crowded, with too many bodies, stagnant air, low ceilings and heat someone eventually threw up. This coupled with an already empty keg caused a stampede for the one narrow staircase out. A bottleneck ensued and someone got wedged and pushed so hard into the door frame at the base of the stairs that their arm broke in two places. Hysteria. Police and an ambulance ended up on the scene and the party was over. TL. DR. Don't put the keg in the basement. Another reminder of just how advanced our species is. We will trample people to avoid vomit. The worst was a large second year college party at some kids off campus apartment. Some of us noticed that people kept disappearing, without a word, from the party. Until we opened a bedroom door and saw an orgy in progress. With people so boozed up, or high, that there were no boundaries as to who was doing what, and to whom. Two couples got into a fight, later, when they realized their partners were doing each other, the rest of us just left before things got worse. If that's the worst party you've been to, you must be doing alright. My 9th birthday party. I invited the entire class as well as my only friends. They went to another school. The only person that showed up was my grandpa. Over 10 years ago my employees got together to throw me a going away party. It was held at a local bar that had closed to the public just for the party so of course I'm feeling really special. There was a kid there, around 19 years old, who was a really good guy but generally attracted trouble. I used to talk to him all the time and any time I sensed that he was about to step out and do something stupid I used to always say you know the worst gift a kid can give his mother, a dead son. There's a long story behind that but it just somehow became a thing I always said to him. 
Anyway I gave a quick speech and started to duck out just as things were livening up so everybody could have their fun while I returned to my wife and our newborn. I bumped into that kid on the way out, talked to him a bit, and of course the dead sunline was the last thing I said before I left. Actually I said you know the worst gift, and he answered a dead son, gave me a hug, and that was it. Pretty obvious how this story ends. Got the call a few hours later telling me he'd been killed in a car wreck. Turns out that he was trying to do good, hadn't drank a drop, no drugs, or anything. He just got into the wrong car and let a drunk idiot drive him home. There were about 4 kids in the car and he was the only one that didn't walk away. Sad. Dang. That's brutal. Probably the one my friends convinced me to throw in my dad's house when he was away. 1. Someone took a crap in my washing machine. 2. Someone wrapped themselves in toilet paper and set themselves on fire. 3. Someone stole coins from my dad's coin collection. Frick I felt bad about that. 4. Someone broke the bathroom mirror. 5. A group of kids burnt cigarette holes in our fancy couch. Some other kids upstairs burnt holes in the carpet. 6. A huge group of 30 year olds showed up with a keg. We were 17 at the time so WTF. And we almost got into a fight for not letting them in. 7. The girl I had just started getting close with left with a random group of people when things started dying down. 8. Lastly, no one stayed to help clean and my dad came back a day early. Worst party ever. Friend told me about this corporate party held for the clients he was at. Open bar but pretty dull with people being on their best behavior to schmooze and make the clients feel important. It was open bar in the sense that employees were understood to hold their crap together. One very very low on the totem pole employee got hammer drunk with one of their biggest clients and finger banged the heck out of her in the pool for like half an hour. Fired that following Monday. Probably worth it as he was making minimum wage. That's the guy you promote not fire. Imagine the client's disappointment next time she visits the office. From another thread, a clown came to my birthday party. I was too and the clown pulled out what us kids thought was a water gun but it was a real gun. He proceeded to take all the mom's watches and purses and left. This was in Mexico. Walked into my kitchen to see a very large semi-pro football player choking out a girl over the sink. I yell what the frick are you doing? And he asks me who the frick I am. When I say it's my apartment, he stops, reaches out his hand and says sorry, man. No disrespect. Great party. My wife was on her way up to the north of England to be a bridesmaid for her friend who she has known since they were young. Her friend has learning disabilities, but seemed happy with her husband to be. On the morning of the wedding, the groom was arrested for molesting young children. He was, apparently, a known pedophile. The bride's family went ahead with the wedding reception anyway. They, still, had, the, wedding, reception. An old friend who unfortunately is no longer with us used to throw house parties all the time in high school. It would usually be 15-30 people getting wasted and doing hard drugs. This one particular time he hosted a massive high school party because his parents weren't home. So he had probably between 80-90 of us teenagers at his house partying like crazy. Ecstasy, coke, shrooms, and of course tons of pot and booze. About an hour and a half goes by and people are messed up and having a blast. I did about 4-5 grams of shrooms that night so I was toast. My buddy who hosted the party filled up capsules with nutmeg. Yes nutmeg. And he was swallowing those all night. Read up about a large consumption of nutmeg. So like I said, an hour and a half goes by and someone asks him where his parents went on vacation. His response. They're not on vacation. They went out to watch a movie. Just then is when the car rolled up on the driveway filled with a bunch of drunk ad stoned punks. Everyone ran out of the house into the park closest to his place. Every single person in that house took off. Everyone. Even the guy who hosted the party. I don't know if he was worried his parents would kill him or if the nutmeg fricked him up so much that he didn't know he was at his own house. Man I miss that guy. I don't know if he was worried his parents would kill him. An old friend who unfortunately is no longer with. So, the obvious question is. What's the worst thing you've seen happen at a party? Work party and one of the workers got wasted, as in stumbling around could barely talk straight. 
He thought it would then be a good idea to go up to his boss and tell her that she was an idiot and didn't know what she was doing. Funny part was, she thought it was funny, but the guy did not show up for work for a week. One of the IT guys photoshopped his picture on the pic of a milk cart and printed a bunch out and posted them around the office. It was awesome. He came back apologized. Kept his job for a bit longer but ended up leaving. Party host ended up beating a friend of mine for puking on his porch. Before the guy could finish asking for stuff to clean it up, the host went to his room grabbed brass knuckles and beat his face in. There was blood everywhere I don't remember doing this but I made our other friend give me his shirt and held it to his face and we took him to the hospital. Later learned host was doing coke in the back alone. Guy had to have facial reconstruction surgery. He has a very different face now. A guy was drunk and ate a hot dog at a house party I was at. An hour goes by and the guy is nowhere to be found. 10 minutes of searching later and a couple of my buddies found him dead on the back porch. He had choked to death on a hot dog just outside of a room full of people. We think he started choking and went outside to try and get some air and was too drunk to do anything about it. But that night was no good. Guy had a party at his grandma's apartment that faced a busy street. After a few too many, he decides to moon passing cars, but went through the glass. His friend caught him before he fell through. Party over while Moon Man went to the hospital. Goodbye Moon Man. At a Cinco de Mayo party there were about 22 work colleagues in a pretty small condo, maybe 1200 square feet. Most of these people were friendly but I was pretty new and immediate started drinking. While I was outside grilling meat on the balcony my deaf co-worker who is Mexican was preparing an authentic Cinco meal complete with freshly fried tortilla chips. Another employee just had to get into the galley kitchen and help though the deaf friend even though he had asked for space. I come inside to deliver some meat and grab another drink and hear the most horrendous scream one could hear. The deaf guy turns around and the other employee was right behind him. He dropped the head of lettuce he was holding which in turn hit the handle of the pot with the frying vegetable oil, which then spilled down the other employee's legs, melting that person's leggings into the skin. The memory is still disgusting. My sister got too drunk at a party. She fell into a bonfire and degloved both of her hands. Degloved is probably the most appropriately horrifying word used to describe any injury. The thought of your skin just sliding off your hands. I feel so bad for your sister just reading that sentence. Somebody took a crap in the dryer and turned it on. Ah, the old dryer deuce. One of my buddies was passed out drunk late into a high school party. Started around 4 and at about 8 pm the kid's stepdad, who owned the house, showed up and started drinking with the kids for a bit. All my buddy remembers is being woken up by his panicked friends and rushed out of the house and driven home. The kid's stepfather had a few beers, came into the living room where everyone was, and blew his brains out on the couch with a shotgun. Second place winner, right after the drowned kid. Frick me I'm glad I didn't drink in high school. Clearly I missed the most fricked up party scene. Child drowning. My apartment overlooks the pool area, and there was a birthday party for an 8 year old just setting up. While the 4 or 5 adults were setting up the tables, the 10 or 12 kids all piled into the hot tub right next to them. One child ended up on the bottom right at everybody's feet, but couldn't be seen. Eventually one of the kids felt her down there, and the screaming began. That's when I first looked outside and watched the rest of the tragedy unfold. Police, paramedics, etc. The little girl did not survive. Similar thing happened at a local pool a few towns over from me. Kid drowned and sunk to the bottom of the pool. The pool was so dirty you couldn't see the bottom. Took two days till someone found him. In high school I saw a guy be encouraged to chug a whole big bottle of tequila. Later that night I found him passed out on a mattress away from everyone else. I talked to him to get him to tell me he was okay. He stood up did the robot and fell back asleep. He left in an ambulance. He blew a .28. I laughed too much that he stood did the robot and fell asleep again. Friends were drunk. Shirts off. Jumping over the fire pit. At night. Everybody having good time. The two people taking turns jumping couldn't see each other on their last go so they ran and jumped at the same time. They met midair. Over the fire pit. One of them got knocked to the side. The other fell on his back right into the fire. Mind you without a shirt. 
We rushed drunkenly to get him out because he was yelling and trying to move out himself but couldn't. Wood up needing skin graft on his back. Looked horrible. Still looks bad. Jack jumped over the candlestick. ETC. Isn't the rhyme to teach you fire hot don't frick with. An ex of mine had a friend who was in high school die at a party. She apparently got pretty wasted and fell down the basement steps. Hitting her head and a couple of girls picked her up and put her on the couch with them to pass out and she died in her sleep. I saw a girl eating a sandwich in the corner of a party with a dog watching. The dog kept going in to take bites of the sandwich and this led to the girl drunkenly moving it at the last second to make out with the dog. It happened for a good 5 minutes. I put down my drink and left right then. It happened for a good 5 minutes. I put down my drink and left right then. You mean you put down your drink and left after watching for 5 minutes you dirty dog you. When I was around 10 my dad hosted a birthday party for one of his good friends whose boyfriend was proposing that night. The boyfriend even hired a mariachi band from out of town to play. Lots of people drinking and dancing. I don't remember why but boyfriend P of the girlfriend shortly after proposing and they went outside to argue. We hear screaming and everyone ran outside to see him, who's drunk and ate the worm, driving away and she's running after him. Next thing we know we hear more yelling outside. Everyone runs outside again to see two of the mariachi band members fist fighting. Just the sight of seeing two mariachi band players, in full costume, fist fighting on my dad's front lawn will forever be engraved in my mind. Soon after the mariachi players left, leaving one of the fighters, my dad offered to drive him where he needed but he just left and we see him walking into the darkness. A perfect exit for a mariachi. This happened after a massive party at the house my best friend and I rented. After everyone left it was me, my best friend Carlin and his girlfriend. Carlin always passed out after a few drinks and went like totally unresponsive. Well he was out at the dining room table and his girlfriend asked me to get him to his bed. I'm a big guy so it was no problem I carried him to his bed. She proceeded to take his shoes off and get him out of his nice outfit so I walked away. I heard her call for me and I returned. Carlin was wearing very tight jeans and she couldn't get them off. She asked if I could help her get them off. I worked a lot during this time with adolescents diagnosed with autism. Teaching life skills such as showering and using the bathroom, some with severe symptoms so undressing a fully grown guy was pretty normal in my day. Without a second thought I tackled the situation and began successfully removing my best friend and roommate's pants. At some point without me realizing his girlfriend walked out to go to the kitchen. I thought she was standing behind me. At this point Carlin wakes up and sees me pulling down his pants. The look in his eyes as he reached down and pulled his pants back up still haunts me. I quickly turn to his girlfriend to explain the situation to find she is not in the room any longer. I stumbled and stuttered and barely was able to mention her name and she had asked for help before excusing myself and running to my room. I laid in bed all night staring at the ceiling and have never felt so awkward in my life. I had no idea what to expect the next day but I assumed it would be can I have your keys I'll help you move your crap out. However the next morning he had very fuzzy memory of the whole thing and thought it was hilarious. We remain close friends but even writing this makes me shudder. His eyes spoke volumes of betrayal, disgust, fear, all as he reached past my hands to pull up his pants. The crushing feeling of awkward misunderstanding that tormented me all night. It was however a great party. A buddy of mine passed out in front of the toilet at a house party of mine. A bunch of people had to use it, but he insisted that they just use the bathroom anyway, with him wrapped around the base, and they did. Eventually a couple decided they wanted to frick in the bathroom, but he was still in there, wrapped around the base of the toilet, so they did it anyways. I finally realized he was in there, dragged him out of there, and put him in my bed for the night, and now, whenever he tells this story, I'm gay for some reason, because I slept there, too. Facing the other direction, fully clothed, I love you Timmy, but also, frick you. In high school I moved to a new school, a tia was showing me around the campus and we sort of hit it off, she invited me to a party that weekend, it was pretty standard fare of underage drinking and crappy music, that is until the girl who invited me got super hammered. She was walking around the party basically throwing herself at anyone and everyone. After she got upset no one would take her upstairs she walked to the middle of the room and called for attention. 
She immediately chugged the rest of her beer, dropped her pants and stuck the beer bottle up her butt. There was like 20 people around her just aghast at what happened. Still remember it vividly after 12 years. Friend tells me, hey if you see me running you should run too. That's awfully concerning, why is that? People are coming that have beef with my friend here. They're strapped apparently. Strapped as in have real guns? Yes. Okay. Well then why don't we leave right now? I couldn't get my two drunkies. I was DD. Because one was talking to a girl and the other was nowhere to be found. Eventually people start flooding outside to see a fist fight. Fight turns into guy pulling his piece out and firing into the direction of someone. Three people get hit. This was in like... Super white people suburbia too. No one died but photos circulated of the people who got hit in the wounds. Hand, leg, and leg. I saw the hand one from afar. Crap is crazy. Later found out it was over a girl and $50. Watched a guy play stupid games with a 5 pound can of black powder and a lighter and turn into a human fireball then spent a week in the burn ward at Boston before dying. Lit. In sophomore year of college my friends and I held a pig roast. My freshman year roommate who was a strange guy and who had not been invited shows up, completely plastered. He goes on a drunken rant about not being invited, grabs a knife, and cuts out the pig's butthole, and eats it. As we stood there staring at him in shock and horror, he ran away. He is now known as Pig Butthole Guy whenever we reminisce about college. We had just finished a round of King's Cup and there was a lull. The cup was full of beer, Smirnoff, Margarita, and a bunch of other crap. We played with two decks. We didn't really finish and it kind of just ended. I didn't want people to get bored so I shouted. Last one in the bathroom has to drink the King's Cup. There was a freaking stampede of about 20 people in my house. First person in broke the door handle and flew into the shower doors that buckled and busted into the bathtub. Second person, my sister, tried to stop and I slammed into her, causing person 1 to fling into the shower. My sister and I crashed down to the ground and I saw why she had to stop. My female roommate was trying to take a crap. My sister laughed so hard she peed herself while I was sitting on her lap. Oh and about 8 more people piled in and landed on top of us. It was great. Freaking heck that's funny. I'm just imagining it from your roommate's point of view. Nice relaxing crap and then every sucker in the party stampedes in freaking up the bathroom and pee on each other. I saw the trifecta. Was at a college party at VT when a girl was on her way to the bathroom decided to have a bodily fluid meltdown. In the hallway to the bathroom she won. Started puking too. Pooped her skirt yeah not pants. And 3. After lying on the ground for a couple minutes also peed. Interestingly enough this was at like 10pm and the parents of the college kids hosting the party were there and I heard one of them murmur they don't party like we used to. A friend of mine organized a house party when he was 15 and told a bit too many people about it. It got gate crashed and I saw the following. Pets in the fridge. Smashed mirrors. Cut up furniture. People making love everywhere. Copious amounts of drugs and alcohol. Doors pulled off hinges. Jewelry stolen. Numerous people passed out. Smashed windows. A turd of his sister's pillow and pee on her bed. Writing carved in walls. None of what was damaged was claimable on their insurance either. Welp. I used to live in Malaysia and one night upon returning to our house, a large group of monkeys picked a fight with us. Actual monkeys started becoming super aggressive, which freaked drunk us out. Completely. Our friend got too drunk. So he walked outside the front porch and threw up off the balcony right in front of the downstairs neighbor's door. Then, he went to the back balcony and threw up off of it, right by their back door. So our downstairs neighbor was trapped by vomit. Someone fell through a glass topped table and badly slashed their arms. Blood everywhere. A party when I was in high school. We were all drunk. But at some point I noticed that some people were replacing water with vodka for all animal in the house. Few birds, dog, and a hamster. I told the guy who was holding the party. He did nothing, just laughing. I removed the vodka and put water back myself. Seriously, frick those guys. You should have replaced their vodka with water to restore balance. A drunk guy threw his plastic cup into the pool when he finished his drink. 
and the guy whose party it was went off, turned off the stereo, got everyone's attention and gave a mental lecture about not throwing anything into the pool. Within 4 minutes everything was in the pool. Plates, glasses, furniture, books etc etc. And worst of all, about 2 dozen pot plants. Your friends are not nice people. Saw a 20 something year old guy finger a 15 year old freshman who told the guy she was 19. Yikes. Just fights. It's always freaking fights. I grew up knowing which parties to avoid, because certain ones would always end with either the cops, or a stabbing and then the cops. Too many folks get drunk and then get real mean I think it's more often mean folks who found an excuse to be so. A suicide. I didn't see the guy shoot himself but the aftermath was plenty bad. Watched my tough guy buddy try to pick a fight with a visiting tough guy from another town. My friend instantly caught a jumping Van Damme spin kick to his head, knocking him temporarily blind. Saw another friend get bit on the neck by a dude while trying to break up a fight. We had to take him to emergency for the bleeding tooth marks in his neck. Another friend was stabbed in the throat at a bush party. He was fine. But it was close and the stabber caught a boot fricking and his truck was parked on a fire pit. Another guy caught stitches trying to break a glass bottle over his own head. Two girls in a savage fight that left both of them missing teeth and bleeding profusely. But I also saw lots of boobs and girls making out and whatnot. It's all about balance in a small town. I'm from a small town too. One guy during his senior year in high school got emancipated and rented a house from his dad. Of course underage drinking occurred regularly. His dad showed up during one of these parties one day and ended up punching his son so hard in the face that he crapped his pants and it fell out of his pant leg. The ceiling there was full of bullet holes. Had a few drinks at my cousin's house. Cousin's girlfriend starts sitting on every guy's lap which leads to one of them telling my cousin that his girlfriend is too flirtatious and that ends up spiraling into an argument which leads to the cousin's girlfriend jumping into the car out the front drunk out of her mind and trying to drive into my cousin and the other guy to stop them arguing. It was quite surreal watching it all play out but the cops eventually showed up and no one managed to get seriously messed up except for a few bruises but what a night that was. The girlfriend sounds like trash. Two bros with reverse snapbacks and D versus got into a fight and for henceforth be referred to as dude and guy. These are large humans who are the epitome of do you even lift. Bro guy threw dude through a wall. Stud and all. Dude pulls himself out of the wall like superman one hand gripping the edge. Falling drywall snowing from above with a look of, let's get on. He charges guy like a linebacker going in for the sack. Guy crouches ready for it. Dude picks him up and runs right out the front door, taking the flimsy screen door with him and right off the porch hitting the concrete sidewalk hard and guy having what's obviously a concussion. Dude is about ground and pound the ever loving frick out of guy and stops when he realizes guy is no longer with us on planet earth anymore and is seeing birds and stars. Asks him if he's okay. Guy mumbles and dude helps him up and brings him inside. That's when we see just how fricked up these two made each other. Guy is concussed and dude has a inch long cut running across his forehead. Dude apologizes to guy and starts crying. Guy starts crying and they hug. Dude then asks if he wants to see a card trick and the party resumes. If there is ever an episode of Animal Planet focusing on the behavior of human males, his would be an excellent dramatization. What is the most NSW thing you have seen at an office gathering or party? Went as a date to a lawyer girl's work party. Open bar. Phenomenal food. Everything was amazing except the smell periodically through the night. Turns out one of the younger interns found out he never got the job opening. So he crap himself and drank all night. Acting as if nothing ever happened. He sure showed them. My assistant gave a BJ to one of my bosses at a bus stop while her boyfriend smoked cigars with our co-workers. His suspicions were confirmed when his girlfriend showed up with breath that smelled like a Christmas bonus. We bought our boss via Vacious Santa lingerie as a gag gift. She tried it on in front of us and proceeded to do a strip tease dance all the while screaming out how her husband was going to love this. She's 54. I worked at a call center. I am a female. Was 16 years old at the time. So the answer was still is. No I did not particularly enjoy it. That's how you assert dominance. 
When I was a teenager I volunteered to DD at a fancy dinner for the local RCMP detachment. Police. Had some bigwigs from provincial headquarters and such. I think it was like the station's 50th anniversary or something similar. Jesus. Christ. One cop got on stage with the band and started singing. Was really good actually. One female cop dancing on a table broke it and went face first into the floor. Kept on partying once the blood stopped. There was a young new cop that year. Ripped good looking guy. So this guy was getting panties thrown at him left right and center. Driving him and his current day home they fricked in the back seat. He slipped me $20 and told me I saw nothing. I saw everything. Next trip the cop and his wife were drunk but nothing outrageous. But as they were getting out he casually tossed what ended up being a pair of thong panties into the front seat and saying something I didn't quite hear. I assume they were from the previous couple. And my favorite was driving one of the higher ranking PICE officers in my province back to his hotel and he just fell over as I rounded a curve. Like a tree. Unconscious. Had to get hotel staff to help drag him out. Now imagine all this with Mounties dressed in their red surge. And these are just the things I saw. My buddies who were DDing have similar tales. Hard to take a cop seriously when he's giving you a ticket for speeding in a car you watched him finger a girl's butt in. There's a lot of Canadian in the post. Went out for drinks with co-workers after service. It was a lunch focused restaurant. And by the end of the night, one of our cashiers decided to lactate on me from across the table. Last year's work Christmas party. One woman, known for over drinking, over drank. She came to sit at the table I was at and proceeded to sit down. Wear their WSS no chair, straight on her butt. Later that night she was grinding on one of the boss's girlfriends and apparently tried to talk the boss and his girl into a three way. She is still confused why she didn't get the promotion she was going for at the time. That would have granted her a company credit card and had her taking clients out to dinners. Company credit card and taking clients out for dinner might sound awesome. But all I'm hearing is working in your off time and more paperwork. Work party. One guy took a crap in the toilet followed by grabbing the vacuum cleaner and sucking it all up. That had to damage the pore filter. First Christmas party at a tech startup. Go to the bathroom towards the end of the night. Realize mid pee that the sounds coming from the stall next mine are the CTO and his wife going at it. Step out of the stall and the CEO and some sales guys are doing lines. CEO sees me and shouts, hey, it's Jared my name isn't Jared. He called me Jared for about 6 moss after that until I pulled him aside and corrected him one day. Fun times. Our company Christmas party had a tequila ice luge. One of our class A drivers got so wasted he was doing flips on the dance floor and juggling corona bottles. Then he went and sat on a 19 year old girl's lap and her mom went ballistic. He was kicked out and proceeded to drive himself home. What a guy. Let me answer a couple of questions. It's a rock and road type company so heavy drinking is accepted. Not driving drunk though. Both mom and daughter work for the company and are quite bitchy. Driver is late 30s. He drove for the circus for years and apparently picked up a couple tricks along the way. The worst part of him driving was the company paid for Ubers to and from the party. Oh. And no not Wisconsin. Christmas party. Married HR woman had an revelry with 5 of the warehouse workers. All still work there. HR woman is still married. Alright. My mistake. It was a cow dead bang. Not a revelry. As far as I know. Sorry. This sounds more like a crowded bang. I saw a woman squirt champagne from her glory hole into the mouth of the woman who juicy inserted a champagne bottle into said tea. I worked as a P editor at the time, so it was appropriate to the situation. Co-worker threw his desk chair out of a four-story window after having a few too many. Dang. That's a big window. Didn't witness this one but heard that this happened just a few months before I was hired. We had a wine tasting for the managers with just some cheese, minor hors d'oeuvres, etc. One particular manager got completely sloshed on wine and got super flirty with another manager from a different department who was significantly younger and good looking. At some point, this young lady put some scented lotion on her hands. 
Smelling this, the drunk manager came over to her and pulled his dong out and asked her to put some lotion on there too. Right in the middle of the room and tasting. I heard he was gone instantly. He was recently found out to currently be a tour guide on a duck boat and a bad one at that. Saw a drunk dude getting a handy under the table from another drunk dude. Both of them were supposedly straight when not drunk. Broger broger broger. Used to work for a big bank. We had a little potluck for Christmas. And long story short about 2 hours later. Someone crap in the bathroom and smeared it literally. And I mean literally. All over the bathroom stalls. The wall. The stall door handle. The toilet sensor. Freaking everywhere. It looked like a XXL Hershey bar stepped on an ID. We never did quite catch the elusive poop handle bandit. Legend says he's still out there, ravaging the latrines of financial institutions to this day. We never did quite catch the elusive poop handle bandit. Please, at least give the poop artist the correct title. We can only assume they were not banditing anything and made a mural with their own droppings. Worked in a warehouse for a while. We had regular awards nights where we'd all get fricked up and hand out stupid awards like driver of the year for the person who had the worst forklift accident. Or who crashed her work car. Other things of note. 1. Doing lines with the boss off his desk every party. 2. Married co-workers banging in the car park. 3. The mentally handicapped and very drunk. Cleaner getting wrapped in packing tape by 3 guys. 4. Having forklift races in the aisles of the warehouse. Forklifts being driven by guys who are plastered. 5. Using forklifts to lift each other to the roof of the warehouse. I don't miss my old job but dang I miss the parties. I love the dundies. My husband's old company decided that they weren't going to invite spouses to the Christmas party. Okay. I dropped him off so he could drink freely. No big deal. After he called me to pick him up I ended up waiting in my car for nearly half an hour. Watching some of his male co-workers through the window getting lap dances from some female co-workers. There's likely a reason the bosses decided to not invite spouses. It means that they didn't have to bring their own spouses either and they could let loose for lack of a better term. Karaoke. Started with two assistants. Both women. Doing a ballad together. In rapid succession. On the stage. And with plenty of drinks between the following things happened. Those two women sing a few songs while clutching each other and giggling the entire time. Some less than wholesome dancing together to a George Michael song. Remaining on the stage one of them sits in a rolling chair while the other serenades gives a lap dance to her to Santa baby. At this point another woman in the office decides it's best to throw some cold water on this party by cutting off the karaoke and play a Christmas music CD. First song is all I want for Christmas is you. The two women turn this into what seems like the perfect song to steamy slow dance to. Much caressing and grinding happening. They are finally broken up once they start making out and light groping each other while trying to hide behind a Santa hat that one of them is holding up covering their faces. And then. Oh boy. It was at our annual awards dinner where they award department of the year, employee of the year, a couple other things for people who'd been there a long time. Woman from my department showed up with a bottle of vodka in her purse. The meal was free. The booze wasn't. And it was expensive. So people at the table were getting sodas. Free. And mixing at the table. It happened every year. The venue mostly overlooked it. Woman who brought the bottle drank quite a lot of it. I mean. Probably half of it herself over the course of the evening. When the dancing started later on she was buombied. She was wearing this strappy dress that she kept falling out of. At one point she was pulling it up. Too. To show off her thong. At some point she lost said thong and was sitting on the stage with her skirt pushed up to her hips and showing off either a thing. She got fired. Classic Meredith. I went to a customer's holiday party. It was a bit of a good old boy company. So it was at the shop and mostly drinking and grilling with funny awards. It was mandatory and had a dress code. So all these guys were as cleaned up as they could get. But in clothes that didn't fit right anymore ever and whatnot. Also a sausage fest since women are rare in industry and most if the guys were bachelors. The guys drank like it was water in the desert and decided to move it to a local bar they frequent. Well that bar was hosting the holiday party for a lab and was a total clam bake until we showed up. You mix drunk nerdy girls and drunk manly men and you end up with a lot of finger banging and it ain't discreet. It was a match made in heaven.
absolutely no fallout, the female bartender was egging them on and the boss men had gone to a different bar. They often ran into those girls at lunch there, but there were no repeat performances. I was all over that holiday clam bake until I realized it was not a party with lots of seafood. A co-worker once stood on a swively chair. This is definitely one of the more dangerous ones. I know our risk manager would have something to say about someone doing this. A group of girls pre-gamed the Christmas party pretty hard. They show up wearing prom dresses and 20 minutes later, the most smashed if the girls is out back with her prom dress hiked up above her waist, panties at her knees, bent over taking it from some dude. This set the tone for the rest of the night. Marriages were unintentionally put on hold so drunken co-workers could gain carnal knowledge of each other. Many walks of shame the following day. Worked at Polish retirement home. Christmas party every year is held in the residence party room. Approximately 30 late 40s early 50s Polish women pounded back the vodka like they shouldn't have been alive afterwards. Many insane things each year. Always some passed out. Always some of them competed to get the attention of the one and only male. The crazy drunk maintenance man. And always at least one person ended up crying. Once they all happened at once. Nurses got blasted. Maintenance dude got blasted. Nurses had him sit with them at one of the tables. They played some weird butt drinking game as best I could tell. They would make out with him. Then take a shot after. Then they all cheer. Eventually I hear chanting and look over. One of the girls is on her knees now. Quite sure she blowing him. Except the chanting sounds more like yelling. Look closer she doesn't seem to be moving. One of the other women is moving to- I wasn't sure. Help the other one suck him off? Nope. She grabs the girl under the shoulders and pulls her off the guy's dong and I hear horrible coughing and the girl lands on her back. The guy's dong is at full mast as he bursts out crying. The guy starts muttering something about how he almost killed her. He's bawling. Dong is still out and waving around. The girl woman is on the floor and coughing but one of the other nurses tries to give her mouth to mouth. Far as I could tell I think the head giver passed out sucking the guy and choked on his dong but was out so cold she was just gonna die. So someone tries to do CPR on the now conscious woman and Ms. Dixica doesn't want or need it. So they start fighting wrestling on the ground and the chanting starts again. Dude is still crying with his dong out but now he's standing over them yelling don't fight over me. Now this is all during the day. And there are other workers on shift cause the place doesn't shut down just cause of the party. So in burst a couple of sober nurses to help. Someone had radioed them for help cause of the person choking. On dong. They burst in and yell what the frick and then the dude with his dong out turns around and faces them. And both scream and run out of the room. Good times. WTF. When I was in my early 20s, I was working at a restaurant with the world's nicest and most innocent group of guys. One weekend, we threw a bachelor party for one of the waiters who was marrying his HS sweetheart. Beer. Strippers at someone's house. Crazy. We all hooted and hollered when the strippers tore off their clothes and walked around the room to each guy. We whistled and giggled when the bachelor got a personal show with whipped cream. Good times. As the girls were ending the show, they asked if anyone had any requests before they packed up. One of the cooks, who was at least 20 years older than most of us, walked over and had a serious, 5 minute conversation with the girls. He then turned to us and said that we all had to cough up $300 if we wanted to see something special. Without hesitation, we handed the money to the girls and sat back in anticipation for what was sure to be a lovely show. He lay down on the floor and both girls pee and crap on him for the next 5 minutes. Guys were gagging. The bachelor started crying. I screamed in terror. One guy walked over to them and yelled. Why? Why? Why it was if the devil himself, in mere seconds, had snatched the innocent souls of 15 naive idiots. The show ended in silence. The girls freshened up and left with their ride. The cook slid on his jacket over his soiled clothes, walked out into the cold night and never returned for his shifts. This is amazing. Our payroll manager got blackout drunk at a Christmas party a few years ago and started insulting people and telling them that they weren't worth how much they were getting paid, while quoting the actual salaries. She was fired the next day, but didn't even remember what she'd done. We had a Mardi Gras themed holiday party. One guy decided to bring his saxophone and be a jazz man. Normal enough, right? 
Well, he also thought that to be a jazz man, he needed to show up in blackface. Luckily, this is rural Wisconsin and no one at the company was black so we all just got really really drunk and told him he's an idiot. Luckily, this is rural Wisconsin and no one at the company was black. Honestly not sure if this makes it better or worse. Finally I have a great one for this. So I has just started at my current company two and a bit years ago at the end of October and another new girl had started a month later. She was a bit shy but quite a big girl. So with her working here for about three weeks and me still being the new guy along comes the Christmas party hosted at quite a nice location nearby the kind of do where multiple companies buy a table for their employees then send them off to cause havoc. The night of the Christmas party comes and she joins some co-workers for pre-drinks and they turn up pretty drunk already with more drinks on the table and even more in their handbags. About 2 hours into the night this girl is not shy anymore. She is mid-twenties. But decides she needs the loose middle of the floor surrounded by co-workers and tables cranks down her tights and pisses on the floor literally spraying everywhere no shame at all. When people try and ask her what the frick she's doing she starts trying to fight them until the one poor designated senior team leader sternly drags her away and tells her to go home now. Two years later and she's still working here and we had our Christmas party last weekend and she causes another scene taking a bottle of wine in her purse into the swanky restaurant we were in. And when she starts mouthing off me and my big drunken mouth apparently yelled why don't you just go pee on the floor which caused her to storm off. I regret nothing, nor totally remember it. There was a co-worker who arrived in a giant baby diaper with nothing else on except sneakers. And someone smeared chocolate frosting on his diaper at some point. Not super wild, but this was a dry party. I worked at Maccus and we had a work party. Some of the crew volunteered to run the night shift while the rest of us went 10 pin bowling and drank scrumpies. I was a manager so I got to see the camera footage the next day. It was of me, walking around the restaurant and kitchen with my pants down, shaping my balls to look like a brain and making people look at my taut scrot. There were also brown eyes and squashed rats, which is where you press your dong and balls up against the glass. That was me in the drive through window. I woke up horrified and knew I was in trouble. There was a small fallout. I miraculously didn't get fired. No one formally complained. My punishment was to wash car windows as they went through drive through on my day off and donate the tips to the Ronald McDonald House charity. I'm North American and I must assume you are Australian. When I used to work for a large corporate law firm, a guy and a girl who both worked in the accounts team got in an argument. One thing led to another and the girl threw her glass of red wine over his white shirt. Without missing a beat he just grabbed her by the throat and started choking her. This was just off the side of the dance floor, in front of 300 plus staff. Fat Smurfetish JPEG. Went to bar for after party. Dude was playing pool with girls, was getting killed. Whipped his balls out and put out them on that table. That sounds like a quick way to lose any chance at having children. A bunch of people from the office decided to get together and head to a foam party. One of the girls got white girl wasted and stripped down to nothing but her panties and danced on one of the tables. Made for an interesting night. Thanksgiving at my shop. We all drew hand turkeys on the whiteboard. Whoa. My co-worker, who is also my friend before we started working there, trying to frick his gf in a river, while the whole company was around, along with their significant others and family. P.S. This was on a canoe day trip. This is how you become the 0.0001% of people to get the flesh eating bacteria eat your junk off. My co-worker basically diddled herself in the middle of my boss's wedding reception, in front of most of my boss's extended family. Good times. First year at the company, married CEO all over an employee pretty much in front of the whole company. Awkward AF. Both really drunk. The fact that they didn't start making out in front of everyone was a Christmas miracle. They probably didn't make out in front of everyone because they were gonna go frick afterwards like they probably have been for a while. My Christmas party is on Friday. Guess I should just stick to beer. I stuck to beer for a Christmas party once. Proceeded to vomit out of my boss window while he drove me home. Trick is to say I should stick to X amount of beers plus. I joined a company and was hired by the new boss. 
Most of the tenured employees were against new boss and his new hires. Every conversation was dependent on who was present and how private it was. Bad environment. Cue the team builder. The majority of the team had worked together for a while and partied hard. The new people, including management, had no idea how bad of an idea a bar setting was. We all got a meal and two drinks on the company's dime. People were asking right away if they could trade their meal for more booze. After the budget was spent, you could see the managers trying to be fun and participate and just accept that it was a shit show in the making. They excused themselves and left. I was new and didn't wanna ride the sinking ship, but I stayed for a while. The crew was great and fun. They obviously had a work relationship, and the bar setting brought out the intimacies that never had an opportunity to blossom completely. The two people ended up hooking up. A bunch of people smoked weed in a car and the crazy thing was the girl showed everyone her fake tea to everyone at the bar. There was a stronger bond after that. The management didn't last, but I did. Better management came in after that and cleaned house. But that team builder was the most ridiculous work thing I've ever been to. Sortie. Looks like fake tea are the real hero here. All 30 of us ended up on top of a mountain at sunrise, naked and drunk. We then went for breakfast and back to work. Bus hijackings can be brutal. CEO slapped my butt in front of my boyfriend and kissed a co-worker in front of her husband. His slapping my butt was not invited and I was thoroughly enraged. I don't know about his kissing my co-worker though. Slap his butt in front of his wife. I was the one who started giving him head in the middle of the party. It's okay though, we're still together to this day. That is one lucky maintenance man. At our Christmas party recently I put a co-worker on my shoulders and carried him along so he could attach some tinsel to the beams in the roof. That was pretty and safe, someone did offer a ladder halfway through but we were already on a roll. I love this literal NSW. Just recently went to my girlfriend's vet office Christmas party at the owner's very nice house. The party is known for everyone jetty g extremely wasted. I'm driving so I stayed relatively sober. My GF on the other hand did not. She was already quite tipsy off of all kinds of mixed drinks. I head to the bathroom down the hall for 5 minutes. Come back to realize she had taken 3 shots. 2 is her total drinking limit. Fast forward ab cut 10 minutes and she's absolutely sloshed. She requests to go to the bathroom and starts asking everyone the quickest way to get there like we're about to go on a road trip or something. I escort her carefully and let her do the booziness. While waiting I got caught up talking to a bunch of co-workers and kinda forgot she was in the bathroom. About 15 minutes later she comes rushing out saying we have to leave because she does not feel good. I inform everyone we are going to head out when I hear someone yell. Oh frick from the bathroom hall. Turns out in that 15 minutes, my girlfriend managed to completely break the toilets in half causing the plumbing pipe from the wall to explode as well which started flooding the room. As an added bonus she decided to start throwing up at the front door as well. Let's just say I sobered up real quick. Anyways the folks were super supportive of it even though they had to replace the flooring plumbing. And the toilet didn't even make her pay anything. The owner also posted pictures on Facebook of his broken toilet and said it was the best party thief had in a while. Summer Clark event. Clark has brought his GF, who was very attractive. Marizo that you would have thought this Clark capable, and everyone is having a good time. Dinner ends and people are deciding where to go out drinking, when server shows up with a tray full of tequila shots. Partner's wife has ordered about 15-20 shots for the maybe 10 people still standing there. Anyway, we start to get to work on the shots and now partner's wife, who we are realizing is really, really drunk, wants to do body shots. Long story short, a minute later, partner's wife is sucking salt of the nape of clerk's gf's neck while everyone but mostly the clerk is nervously laughing. We all head to the bar, except partner and wife apparently go home rather than join us. Clark and GF don't last much longer as the wheels come flying off her wagon at the bar about 15 minutes later. Good times, good times. For your information, Clark is now a 4th year associate and I don't believe I've seen the partner's wife at a firm function in quite some time. My supervisor and I somehow ended up on the couch in the basement of another co-worker's Christmas party, watching Demon P. Used to work as a press man. In an old school magazine poster print house, 
where the print side is mostly male and post treatment mostly female, for the most part 50 plus old. Pressmen are traditionally very keen on getting their drink on in this being Finland in the 90s. Well suffice to say there were always loads of drunk people at our events. Most parties were disbanded after first few wrestling bouts. It was usually around the third or so round of playful test of strength that someone got angry for real and then fists became involved. I have no idea why, but they were always wrestling. Guys in their 40s and 50s. Drunk as frick. Wrestling. Always some groping, but those ladies had been around these kinds of guys for decades. So they just slapped them off or used that commanding tone blow collar working women sometimes develop. A harsh goddamn Tim, the have would always calm everyone down for at least good 10 minutes. Reddit, what happened at the wildest party you've ever attended? I came home from a business trip one evening, tired, looking forward to going to bed, and with a migraine, and found a dozen or so people in my living room having a loud obnoxious party. Cans of cheap beer and dirty dishes everywhere, crappy music blaring, etc. No way in heck was I going to get any rest. It seems my roommate had decided to throw a party on the spur of the moment, and had run out of beer early and gone out to get more, leaving my home filled with people I didn't know. So I went in my room and got my knitting basket and brought it out to the party and sat down in a corner and started knitting. Soon enough a young lady came along and asked about it, so I offered to teach her to knit. I'm very good at this, I can have you knitting in 15 minutes. My roommate came home about an hour later. The local liquor store was out of her brand and she had to find another and then some problem with the bus, only to find that a raucous party had turned into a knitting circle. They turned off the music so they could hear me. They cleaned up the living room so they wouldn't get crap all over the yarn. They were all sitting around knitting their first swatch, and they all thought it was their idea. You mind fricked them into a quiet evening. I like you. I know this kid, we'll call him Carl, who decided it would be fun to play with fire whilst very fricked up. We've all been there, however it just so happens that Carl has balls of steel and absolutely no self preservation instincts. I'm at my friend's house and we're just having a kickback drinking and whatnot. The party is winding down and there's only a few people left. I go to buy more beer and when I leave this kid is hitting tennis balls dipped in gasoline with a baseball bat in the backyard. Whatever it's not my house. Fast forward 15 minutes later and I crap you not I pull up to the house and the freaking street is on fire. A solid 10 foot chunk of the street is fully ablaze and I can smell the gasoline. Cops are everywhere and there is a police chopper in the distance. Freaking Carl. So I park the car and run up to the house to find the girl who owns the place crying her eyes out. She goes on to tell me that Carl in his infinite wisdom had decided to try to build a Molotov cocktail. He succeeded. However when he tried to hit the wall in the backyard, he threw too high and hit the street instead. He then proceeded to pour the rest of the 5 gallons of gas on the already raging inferno. Carl booked it when he heard sirens and a full on manhunt with dogs and a helicopter ensued, yet he somehow got off with no charges. Once again, freaking Carl, TL, DR, Carl isn't allowed to drink Jager anymore. Carl that kills people. Northeastern University, Boston, Halloween 1981. I was a freshman that year, and it just so happened that Halloween was on a Saturday night. There's a street just off campus that's lined with three-story brownstones, and all of the flats were rented out to students. Dang near every flat had a Halloween party that night, and they'd had all day to party. Somewhere that evening the party has just poured out of the flats, and it became a huge block long party, fueled by drugs and alcohol. Things started getting out of control. People started forgetting where their clothes costumes were. Some small fires were started. Then, cars started getting flipped over and added to the smaller fires. A busload of Asian tourists unfortunately took a wrong turn and ended up on that street. And it was taken as a challenge. With about a hundred people on each side trying to see if they could flip over the bus and yelling heave. Ho. Oh. At that point. The cops became something less than amused, and called out the riot squad in full helmets, shield mitts, shield mitts. Barricades of flaming dumpsters were erected, and that's about the time the tear gas canisters started being fired at the crowd. I forget how many were eventually arrested. Good times, good times. Fact checker, Halloween in 1981 was a Saturday. Whole story checks out. 
I went to a party at a friend's house in the middle of nowhere where a few people were dropping acid, and everyone else was blackout drunk, except for the DDs like me. Needless to say weird things happened. One girl was running around the yard hugging, sometimes humping, trees and naming their souls. A drag queen showed up, swilling gin straight out of the bottle. I look out the kitchen window at some point and a few guys from the party were herding my friend's cattle into another field through his yard. A gay orgy broke out in the office of all places. My buddy passed out on his bed, and my friend was almost at the point where she was going to be sick in my car so we left. I came back the next morning to grab a few things I forgot and found my friend asleep on the floor where his bed used to be. Out the window I could see his bed in the middle of the field the cattle used to be in. Perfectly made. The bed linens were blowing in the breeze like a dang fabric softener commercial. He had a wooden bed with a large headboard and footboard so several people had to have disassembled that sucker, taken it outside, reassembled it, and then put the sheets back on it. M even did hospital corners and threw the decorative pillows on there, just so. My friend had no recollection of getting up and moving, whatsoever. Nothing was broken or stolen, including the livestock. An anonymous group of someones had cleaned the house, done the dishes, and taken out the trash by the time I returned. Nobody remembered confessed to doing this. Comma nothing was broken or stolen, including the livestock. An anonymous group of someones had cleaned the house, done the dishes, and taken out the trash by the time I returned. Nobody remembered confessed to doing this. Good guys. Two girls died, and more were injured. It was freaking terrifying. There were hundreds of people there and the party had spilled out onto the streets, and a car drove through the people. He was found guilty of murder. I'd be prepared to bet that you live in New Zealand. Woke up in my duplex at 2am to the sounds of banging and suspension and in panic mode I jolt upright. Oh crap someone is stealing my car. I rush to the window and look out as my eyes slowly focus. Across the streets party got out of control, and it was spreading to the neighbor's yards. A middle aged couple lived there with their teenage son, so it was a bit surprising. There is a couple of people on my lawn passed out, and I can see across the road that people are throwing crap out the windows. Loud music. Ect. Four really drunk dudes are carrying a couch and some lamps out the front door. Now my attention turns to the real problem. There is a guy banging a girl on the hood of my car, and they were getting to a climax which is what woke me up in the first place. After something like 30 seconds of letting my eyes adjust and for me to collect my thoughts, I find the keys on my nightstand and press the horn button. The dude misses mid thrust and slams his knee into my bumper. I can hear it from inside. Left a dent. But worth it. The next week I talked to the neighbors and heard the damage. Someone had jammed the tub and left it running. It flooded the house and ruined their upstairs carpet. People slashed all the furniture and broke their empties on the walls, leaving marks and dents. Must have been at least $100,000 in damages. Cock block, but funny cock block. Semi throw away here because I switch up my accounts when telling personal details so I can't be identified. Was at a friend's 21st birthday in a warehouse in an industrial area. Everyone was high on mushrooms, coke, MDMA, cannabis, alcohol, and whatever else was going around that night. A band was having a loud jam and everyone was dancing frenetically. There were jugglers and fire twirlers. The keyboardist was so coked up he headbutted the keys and there was blood dripping out of his forehead while he played his solo. But then we heard a loud bang on the front door. Everyone stopped playing and went out to peer through the letterbox hole. I didn't see because I was tripping and a little scared that they were gonna stab me in the eye through the hole. But it was a few guys with balaclavas and knives and guns. None of us had any weapons. We tried to escape out the back route, but there were guys waiting around there too. They screamed at us to shut the frick up and let them in or they were gonna kill us. After not too much deliberation, we decided not to let them in and called the cops. They started trying to hack the door down with a crowbar when luckily the cops arrived just in time and they ran off into the night. Turned out they ran a rim lab in the warehouse next door and didn't want any noise complaints drawing an attention. TL. DR. Took mushrooms in a big castle. Got sieged. Accidentally read that as Barclava, which is delicious. Buddy had a party that someone posted to Facebook. What was to be maybe 30 people turned into 150 and people parrying in a double wide trailer. 
It was pouring outside so mud got trapped in and the carpet went from white to dark brown on minutes. Eventually the crowd went outside and a massive brawl ensued fueled by drugs and alcohol. I 100 plus people's moshing in his front yard which had turned into thick mud. The end of the night there was people passed out all across his yard. Probably 10 cars stuck on his front lawn. At the beginning of the fight I gave my keys to my girlfriend and told her to lock herself in my truck. I went back to my truck to leave after it quieted down and find my truck covered in mud handprints. And it turned out my GF let 3-4 other girls get in. So I had to deal with 3-4 nutcases crying and drunk. The only way this story could get any more hillbilly is if some dude busted out his banjo at the end of the story. I got hammered on my 20th birthday, wandered the streets of Copenhagen for hours, and finally wound up celebrating with a bunch of strangers snorting see who sang me happy birthday in unison. It was fantastic. I'm going to Copenhagen next weekend, renting a flat near Christiania, that's gonna be awesome. I was at a party where there was this really loud, insanely drunk girl, making a fool of herself all night. At the end of her shenanigans she went into a room with some guy. When she emerged she had a giant load in her hair. She proceeded to sit down on the couch and passed out. A spectacle for the rest of the night. Comma a giant load in her hair. This was the best one yet. Had a crazy night that ended in a penthouse apartment. Only an hour after passing out we were woken by the German equivalent of SWAT and 20 plus German police officers who thought we had murdered someone. The chief was wearing sweatpants as he was called out of bed to attend the scene on a Saturday morning. Pretty crazy. Dude got shot and chopped up over a drug debt in Salzte. Marion wouldn't have wanted to be a kid at that party. They were all forced to take chunks of him so they would be in on it and wouldn't tell. Two people nobody knew started having sex in the corner of the room. It was weird because we were playing laser tag for my 11th birthday party. I was Thor and I won that game. Probably because I shot the guy in the back and watched the whole time. I made out with two married chicks. Licked my friend's wife's nipple for him to do a tequila salt and lime shot. Ended up crying at one point on the floor drunk. Also got woken up by a couple of swingers arguing about sharing and ended up sleeping in the same bed as the hostess. Woke up with her in just her underwear snoring into my ear. Swinger Halloween parties are awesome. I went to one party where I knew only about 5 people and the other 100 or so were completely random to me. First of all I took an hour long cab ride with one friend and a German exchange student, which she paid for all by herself at her insistence. As soon as I arrive at this unknown girl's party I see one of the few friends I know, let's call him Sammy, because that's his name, on the lap of the girl's mum chatting her up. Confused, I say hi and let him get back to his thing. I go to look for some coke to mix with the alcohol I brought with me and ask the dad, who's completely fine with a 17 year old guy blatantly hitting on his wife, where I could find some. Coke sniff sniff. It's upstairs in the bathroom. Now frick off and get high. The rest of the party turns into a blur from here. With my best mate doing a classic and come in by screaming everybody I just had sex with Adele in the bushes and later asking me do many people know I had sex to which I had to reply you literally yelled it to everyone in the kitchen. Next thing I remember is stumbling around in the yard as the morning light starts to rise and two naked men going around tackling to the ground anyone they can find. After this I decide it's too much and find a closet to fall asleep in, which already has 4 people asleep in it. I wake up later to find the entire kitchen floor covered in what used to be really nice china, and several bent spoons in my pockets. I went to a party at a really nice house in undergrad. Big party. Got wasted. Earlier in the day I had eaten a large meatball sandwich from a local deli. A cute girl asked drunk but me to take a shot with her. I do. 5-10 minutes pass as I sit on the couch trying to convince myself I'm not going to puke. I got up and rushed to bathroom, pushing some girl out of the way as she came out the door, holding my other hand over my mouth as meatball sub brushes up my throat. The thick orange mixture of chunky meatballs, marinara sauce, stomach acid, beer, and vodka spews through my fingers as I try to make it to the purple toilet. In fact, everything in the bathroom was purple. I cough and finish puking and stood up to see the mess I had made. It was terrible. There was thick red paste everywhere. I tried to wash the terrible taste from my mouth with some water from the sink, 
and rushed out to the kitchen to find something to try to clean it up. I found half a roll of paper towels and rushed back to the bathroom. I drunkenly smeared the mess all over the place and did a terrible job cleaning up. I'm sure I just made it worse. The party's host ended up kicking me out of the house and I passed out on an air mattress in the back of my friend's van. Bro, thinking back on it now, it's pretty creepy that he had a mattress in his van. Anyways, I was jolted wake up the next morning, hungover as frick as the van zooms down the interstate. My friend later informed me that I had puked all over Prince's signature. Pretty crazy night. TLDR. Got wasted and puked all over Prince's signature. Barbecue gradually descended into an orgy. Highlights included. Someone smoking opium. Random hookup in a sauna cheered on by everyone outside. Including the girl's boyfriend. Someone being set on fire. On purpose. Homemade absinthe. Knife show and tell. One by a sword umbrella. Neighbors complaining after being woken up by noisy BDSM scene involving whips in the garden. Don't party with goths. You can't keep up. Why the frick has everyone but me been to a goddamned party that's turned into a fricking orgy? My very first party. I was 15. Arrived late to at least 60 completely wasted people. First thing in the hall were four guys crossing their dongs like in a sword fight. One yelling and guard. You continue to living room. Not too bad here. Wild game of drunk twister going on. Of course some of the people ended up having sex. But, well. Went upstairs. Still looking for a friend. Enter the master bathroom. In the tub sits one of my friends. It was his house. To be fair. Eating chocolate cream cake with both hands and good parts of the rest of his body. Along with most of the room. Completely covered in it. Giving me a brown smile and telling me to hop in while another equally drunk friend tried to clean him up. With the help of one single sheet of toilet tissue. While soothingly murmuring there. There. Nice and clean. Bath time. Tea. Backed out of that room too. Finally found my friend right next to her naked. Passed out couple who obviously had been having sex moments earlier. He had this wide eyed stare and claimed to not have said anything when they didn't notice he also was in the room. As he didn't want to disturb them and be impolite. Well. We then proceeded to actually have a good time. Later on the ride home. The girl next to me gave her boyfriend a hand job right there J in the back seat. I feel still bad for our designated driver till today. You sounded like a ghost. Priests and schoolgirls Halloween party. Huge Victorian house. Liquor A flowing. Bonfire in the backyard. They built a full size confession booth in the backyard just for this event. With a fancy screen and a glory hole with a red velvet curtain. I'm in the confession booth. Wearing my secretary outfit. From the film secretary. Getting fricked like nobody's business. Everybody's business. By a guy in orange convict suit. Next. I'm waiting in line for the bathroom. Making out with some guy dressed as a Russian soldier. Next. My friends in the bathroom. Crying on the toilet in her schoolgirl uniform. Because her ex is there with someone else. While she's pooping. Next. People are doing lines of coke. I hope I'm not being rude. Mind if I do some coke? Next. I realize this party's gone from wild awesome to wild gtfo. I'm leaving the scene as cop cars are pulling up. I was at a party in Australia. At this vacation home in a neighborhood of retired people a bit outside town. The attendees were mostly 19-20 years old. So one of the crucial things here happened to be that the guy-girl ratio was about 2. 1. And everyone was frisky as frick. Things started out pretty chilled. With people smoking around the bonfire. Drinking and having fun. But later in the evening, as people started hooking up and it became evident that there weren't enough girls to go around, many of the guys started using their creative energies for other things. So one guy punched a hole in the wall. Don't ask me how. One of my friends asked him how the heck did you do that and he responded with it's easy mate. You just go like this and punched another hole. The host eventually ran out of toilet paper and one of the bathrooms was just covered in puke. Apparently hitting the bowl is quite difficult. But thankfully the house had two bathrooms. The other one did get its door ripped off the hinges though. Also, there wasn't enough firewood. So we had to use the branches of the garden trees as firewood. Eventually, all the low branches were gone. So some guys figured it would be a good idea to rip out boards from the garden fence and eventually burn the lawn chairs. One guy spilled goon. 
Australian white wine, on his t-shirt and put it down on the bonfire to dry it off. The next time I saw him, he had first degree burns on his feet and about 10 holes singed through his shirt. Surprise. Surprise. Eventually, one of the pensioners in the neighborhood called the cops and the party was shut down. We longboarded to the beach, watched the stars and did the sex robot dance. Good times. I should make clear on behalf of Australia's wine industry that goon is box wine. The cheaper the better. After crowd surfing in the living room went to bed in some random room as I was tired as frick and it was 8am. About 30 minutes later this guy I met earlier and someone who was apparently Kate Moss's niece began fricking on the same bed as me. I was just like, yeah whatever I'll just try to get back to sleep. When suddenly the slats came out of the bed on my side. Causing the, 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 I then hooked up with someone in front of their sister, blacked out and woke up on the tube. A few years ago, my friend Caleb held a house party at his place. We called Caleb Fat Bamboo because he was an aspiring pornster. Then there were these two other friends of mine named Chris and Ryan. Chris nickname was Yuha because crap always got broken around him. Ryan didn't have a nickname. But whenever you got these two guys together the homoeroticism went through the roof. It was a dangerous game of chicken and somebody's wang always ended up visible by the end of the night. As the night wore on. These two got worse and worse the more they drank until they both passed out on top of one another in the recliner. We tried to wake them up, but no matter what we did it didn't work. They were in an alcoholic coma so deep Caleb even slapped Chris in the face hard enough to split his lip. Nothing. Then Caleb and I looked at each other and shared a terrible idea. We hoisted them into Caleb's guest room, took off what clothing was left. I wrapped a towel around my fist and punched Ryan in the butt as hard as I could. Then did the same to Chris. We brought the stereo into the room and set it to go off at 7.30 in the morning. Then we set up a camera in the closet and made sure you had to be looking at it to notice it. We set it to start recording at the same time the alarm went off. To this day, neither of them know that we have a video of the two of them waking up and realizing what they think they've done. Then making a pact with each other to never speak of it to anyone. Ryan is now engaged. And Caleb and I are toying with the idea of having some reception entertainment. Will you at least let them know it was all a setup? Me and some friends were with the son of a Russian defense minister who shall not be named. We show up at a club and he wants the biggest VIP room 50 centers standing right next to us and his manager or whatever wants it to. My Russian friend agreed to pay 6,000 pounds for the night. 50 responds with 10,000 pounds for the night. My friend then agrees £18,000 for the night and 50 backed off and went somewhere else. 50 was not happy and tried to intimidate my friend into backing out. My friend said want to make it 10 and we strolled into the club. Sometimes I wonder why I can't be the son of basically a glorified Russian arms dealer. The night was insane but too long of a story to post in such a huge comment thread like this. I'll write it and post if there is interest he. TLDR. Russian friend outbid 50 cent for a VIP room. Went to a party in high school that was way out of town at a friend's house that had almost no neighbors. At about midnight, a cop car rolls up and he walks into the kitchen of the house and yells nobody move. Until I get a B it turns out that he was invited to the party by my friend's older sister. The night then took off because some people brought fireworks and started setting them off. Kids from 3 miles out saw the fireworks and rode their quads to the house. The party that began as about 40 people ended up being close to 150 between people between people inviting others and kids just seeing it from a distance and knew who lived there. Later that night the cop had sex with one of the girls from college on the front porch in front of about 20 people. Needless to say, we never got speeding tickets from him after that. This party is thrown every year at a certain well known university by a certain very secret society. Hugh Grant and Boris Johnson were members, if that helps. You are put on blacked out coaches and taken to a secret location in the countryside where they search you for phones and cameras before letting anyone in. If you've got a phone or camera, the bouncers snap it in half and let you in. Inside, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. The entertainment is various strippers, all with dark twists, like a black swan themed show where the girl pulled feathers attached to needles out of her skin. 
all the alcohol is paid for, and there is a tent for drugs as well as roaming dealers and uniforms. Every year the theme is something cryptic so people come in the trippiest most nude outfits. Maybe half of the girls were topless. I wore tights, gold body paint and eye makeup. If you want to see a future prime minister blow coke off a naked girl, it's the place to be. I posted this in another thread, but it also comes under the wildest party I've hosted attended. I held a house party for my 26th last year, and proceeded to drink myself freaking stupid. So stupid that my mate dragged me to his car and drove me to Macca's to get some lining for my alcohol filled stomach. I returned to the party, still blind and loaded up on Big Macs and cheeseburgers. I was dumped on my bed, completely paralytic and proceeded to chuck up all over the show. I was rescued from choking on my own vomit, tossed in the bathroom and sat in the shower whilst I got my crap together. My sheets were stripped, and somehow my bed became an awesome place to hang out for people. But we'll get back to that, after showering, and having a girl who was keen on me chat with me whilst I showered just to get a look in on my naked, and brushing my teeth, I proceeded to drink some more and single-handedly made out with a dozen of the girls at the party. But wait, it gets better. I stumbled into my room, where two of my mates and half a dozen of my female friends were pee and getting handsy. I leaned over a couple of them to pull out my riding crop for the lulz, and ended up making out with one of them, whilst groping another one's breasts, then made two of them make out whilst another one was sucking on my mate's girlfriend's nipples. Next thing I know, clothes are coming off. I have the girl I've been chasing for ages sucking my dong, the girl who perved on me naked in the shower is riding my face, and the others are going heck for leather up the other end of the bed. Dong sucker decides to mount me, and after a while of that I'll lift face rider off, and pick up the girl who's still riding me. In full view of the impromptu orgy, I pin her up against my room's windowsill, and plow her for as long as my alcohol riddled limp dong can handle. We all clean up. Party on through till dawn with the rest of the people there. The next day, I look at my bed and there's a massive wet patch on it. Apparently we had some squirters. TL. DR. Got drunk. Made a fool of myself at my birthday. Chucked up a cocktail of vodka and Big Macs. Had an orgy with 6 girls and 2 mates. Best. Birthday. Ever. Bill Murray showed up to my birthday party and smoked a blunt with me while discussing adventure time have video will post you bastard don't know if this fit or is even considered wild as going to parties isn't really my thing but i've been to a party where you could buy drugs with your credit debit card there was a regular looking bar where you could order drinks along with lines of coke or whatever you wanted really people literally walked around with joints and plates with lines of coke never seen anything like it before or since we threw a foam party one year Homemade foam maker out of a huge leaf blower, detergent, and a hockey jersey. Jersey went around the end of the blower to disperse the foam. It's amazing what people will do in public when they think no one can see them. We caught one couple having sex, and another dude getting a handy. Same girl both times. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.